Okay, so after we solve the Schrodinger wave equation, we get these solutions called quantum numbers. Quantum numbers are required to describe the distribution of electrons in an atom. Now there's four different quantum numbers, and we've actually talked about one already. We talked about n, which we call the principal quantum number. So n, the principal quantum number, this is the energy level that the electron resides in. So n can be a positive integer that's greater than zero, so it's got to be one, two, three, and so on. And the larger that n is, the farther away the, the electron will be from the nucleus. Okay, so the next one is L, which I'm going to write as a, as a cursive L, so that way it doesn't look like a one or an i or whatever. So L is called the angular momentum quantum number. angular momentum quantum number. What this tells us, this is the shape of the atomic orbital. Now the value of L depends on the value of N. Okay, so to, f to find the highest value that L could be, if we take N and subtract one from this, that's going to tell us the highest value L could be. Okay. So let's say if we're dealing with the n equals 1 energy level, the highest value that, n, that L could be is 1 minus 1 or 0. So if L is equal to 0, that's describing the S orbital, which looks like a sphere. Okay, now if let's say is n is equal to 2, okay, 2 minus 1 is 1, so that means that's the highest value that L could be. If L is 1, this is describing the p orbital, which looks like a pair of, like a dumbbell or a pair of water wings, however you want to call it. Now if n is equal to 3, the highest value L could be is 2. And that describes the d orbital. And then if, L is e if n is equal to 4, the highest value L could be is 3, and that describes the f orbital. Now, the d's and the f's get a very, 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 very complicated drawing. So we usually tend to not draw those as much. Okay. So the value of L, the, the maximum value of L, is going to be n minus 1. Okay? All right, so the third quantum number is m sub L, and this is called the magnetic quantum number. The magnetic quantum number. This describes the orientation of the orbital in space. Okay, so the value of m sub l depends on the value of l, and so the way this de uh, the way it depends is that let's say the value is a value of L is 1. So that's describing a p orbital. So that means the value of m sub L can be from minus L to a positive L. So if we're describing m, if we're saying that L is 1, so that's describing the p orbital, m sub L could have values from negative 1 
zero, and positive one. So there's three different version, three different ways of drawing that p orbital. Okay. So for certain values of L, M sub L could have values between negative L to positive L. Okay. And then M sub S, the last one, this is called the electron spin quantum number. And then basically what we're looking at is which way does the electron spin? It's either going to spin, it's either it's going to have two values, plus one half or minus one half. If it's plus one half, then it's spinning clockwise. If it's negative one half, it's spinning counterclockwise. And electron spin was verified by uh, the scientists Ger Stern and Gerlach in 1924. All right, so now that we talked about quantum numbers, let's talk about the atomic orbitals a little bit more. So what are the shapes of the orbitals that L describe? And those shapes can be hard to define because remember that an electron can be found anywhere in the energy level, but if we know the wave function of the electron, then we can square that and create a boundary surface diagram that covers roughly 90% of the total electron density of an orbital. And so what we're doing here is taking a plot of psi, okay? And if we square that, okay, well, I got too, too excited. So what we're looking at here in this diagram that I just circled, that's the plot of psi. And if I square this, I get the shape of the s orbital. So that's pretty cool, okay? And if we could do the same thing with the p's, and then here's down below the shapes of the d orbitals. All right, so putting this together, here's our next question. Given the values of the quantum numbers associated with the orbitals in the p, 3p subshell. So let's, let's break this down. So if we're told 3p, Right off the bat, we actually know two of the quantum numbers already. The number three tells us n, and then p tells us the l value. So right off the bat, we know since we're dealing with three p, n has to be three, and l, since it's p, has to be one. So, we know that L, M sub L, is going to have values that are possible from negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So negative 1, 0, positive 1. Okay. And then M sub S could have values that's either plus or minus 1 half. So it wants to know what this question is asking is what are the values of the quantum numbers associated with the electrons in these orbitals? So here we go. You're going to have one electron that could be n equals 3, l is equal to 1, m sub l is equal to negative 1, and then m sub s is equal to plus 1 half. You could also have another one that says n equals 3, l equals 1, m sub l is equal to negative 1, and then m sub s is equal to negative 1 half. Now the next time I'm going to change negative 1 for the m sub l to 0. n equals 3. L equals 1, M sub L is equal to 0, M sub S is equal to plus 1 half. And then you have N equals 3, L equals 1, M sub L is equal to 0, M sub S is equal to negative 1 half. And then the last set, you've got N equals 3, L equals 1, M sub L, oops, M sub L is equal to plus 1, m sub s is equal to plus one half. And then you have n equals three, l equals one, m sub l is equal to plus one, m sub s is equal to negative one half. And so those are the possible sets of quantum numbers for electrons that are in the 3p subshell. Okay, so now that we know the shapes of the orbitals, we can actually start talking about the energies of these orbitals. And according to the Bohr theory, the energies of the hydrogen orbitals went like this. 
that we start with the 1s, which is lowest in energy. Then you have the 2s and 2p, which were equal in energy. Then you have the 3s, 3p, and 3d, which were equal in energy. And then you have the 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f, which were all equal in energy. But that only works for one electron. So keep that in mind. That only works for if you only have one electron. If you have a multiple, if you have more than one electron, this is the this is tends to be the pattern that we follow. That we go from 1s to 2s, 2s to 2p, 2, 2p to 3s, 3s to 3p, 3p to 4s, 4s to 3d, 3d to 4p, 4p to 5s, 5s to 4d. Okay, so that tends to be the pattern, which is actually what we're going to talk about in the next video.